Hi, welcome back to the channel. It's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Um, we're going to have a look at some insulation resistance testing on my little test rig up there today. Uh, before we get into that, just a, a quick uh, answer of a question that someone sent in as regards a video I did uh, two or three ago by the time this comes out, maybe, which was um, the look at resistance um, on ring final circuit testing. So we was looking at your R1, R2 and ZSs and how it kind of correlates together between the maths and what you might actually measure out on the site. And as part of that, I showed a measurement of doing uh, ZDB, which is the measurement of um, the uh, airport loop impedance at this consumer unit distribution board up here. And um, I was not as clear as I could have been on that video in fairness, because I'm imagining this has been kind of the origin. This is my test rig and uh, it's going to build up over time. We're going to get a little meter up there and um, other bits and pieces. But I did mention that it's um, it's it said DB. I don't know why this camera's going on, I wonder. Let's get it back centralised. It's having a right move around, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, um, sorry, Z, ZDB. So that's a measurement of um, essentially effort loop impedance at a sub-board. So you, that's what we call it, ZD, ZDB. That's basically what it is. So you need all your earthing and bonding conductors connected and then you would carry out the measurement. Um, as, you, as you would if you were testing a light fitting or a socket for ZS, just the same, and you record that as, as ZDB. Now on my particular example, the TPN board's over there, all the bonding conductors are in it, um, uh, and it, it's all remained connected. You should never remove bonding conductors when you're doing a, a, a test for airflow loop impedance in an energised system, so don't ever do that. The only time you would do that was when you're recording ZE, which on another prior video you saw me doing, so in that case, the installation is isolated and you remove the earthing conductor and test for your ZE. So yeah, ZDB is a remote subboard measurement, essentially just a ZS at the distribution board consumer unit. I hope that answers that one for the person who asked the question. I do apologise, I've forgotten who it was. I think it's Home Improvements, if I'm getting that right. Uh, apologies if not. But thanks for the question, I do appreciate it and uh, I hope that answered it. So ZDB in this case was the measurement of airfoot loop impedance in the consumer unit up there. And um, yeah, the earthing and bonding was still connected in the main TPM board at the other side of the office. I should have made that clear. I was kind of focused on um, just looking at the ring final circuit and uh, rushing around. As I say, I'm not a teacher. Um, I'm just trying to share a bit of my knowledge and show how you can um, expect to find different results when you're out doing um, inspection and testing to what the maths might actually tell you you would expect to find. It's not science lab conditions. So it's just to try and show you that really. And, a bit of awareness to that point because well sometimes people can make a measurement and it doesn't match it exactly up with what the maths would tell them it should be and um, they start looking for things that aren't even an issue in the first place so just try and raise awareness on that but anyway back to this video we're looking at insulation resistance testing and um, yes so we're going to jump in and do some IR testing um, again if you're looking for any further guidance on this recommend you, you get yourselves a copy of guidance note 3 all the test procedures are in there for you to see and we're going to ignore Selv and Pelv. So in the examples I'm showing this is um, just a 230 volt supply. Um, we're not got any Selv or Pelv stuff there. And generally speaking you'd expect to see something over 1 mega um, as your insulation resistance minimum value. If you were measuring anything like that you'd want to be doing some further investigation to find out why. Um, usually you would get much higher readings but I mean that's what the regs say the minimum value is. But my advice to you is if you're measuring 1.1 mega ohms, don't just pass that off. And there's two ways you can approach insulation resistance testing. One is through the um, global IR uh, route, which is basically, um, I think guidance note three words it in a simple installation, which is basically an installation without um, distribution circuits, so submains. You've just got final circuits. Um, you should be able to do a global IR test from the consumer unit. So you would um, main switch off, obviously it's a dead test and you would then uh, make sure your circuit breakers, if we've got a board with circuit breakers, RCBOs, are in the on position. If they're not liable to damage, you need to check with your RCBOs if you can do that. Some of them don't like it, so you have to disconnect the wiring out of them. But uh, in getting my example, circuit breakers, not RCBOs. So we're all good. And uh, yeah, if you make a measurement between your, your line and your earth bar, you can test the insulation resistance of the whole installation as one and make sure you get a good value. If you do, you don't need to then subdivide the circuits. Again, then with neutral, 
to um, the earth bar and check you're getting a, a good value again. If you are, you don't need to subdivide the circuits. And finally, the well, you can do it in whatever order you wish, but line and neutral, um, make sure that you are getting uh, a good value there. And that's the one that catches a lot of people out more times than not, because there's usually some connected equipment left in somewhere. You know, you'd be really lucky to remove all of that in your first hit um, when you're out, out on site. You'll miss a neon somewhere for sure, or, um, you know, have a bit of electronic equipment that's maybe plugged in in the loft or under the stairs somewhere that you've not seen. So you've got to be really, really careful with the, the line and neutral one especially. And in my example later in this video, you'll see why. So we'll, we'll talk about that more later on. Um, if you are subdividing the circuits, so this is if you are going to, say you've um, done a global IR reading or you're on a much larger installation and you can't do a global IR reading because it's just huge, you need to go through it a circuit at a time, um, you can remove the um, conductors, put them in some crop clips and then carry out the test. But important to make sure that the, the CPC is left in the earth bar so you would leave that with all of the other earths. So just disconnect your line of neutrals. Um, the line you can do by having the MCV open or off, whatever you want to call it. Um, the neutral you would have to remove from the neutral bar and put it in a crop clip. Um, so I hope that explains that. But again, there's some diagrams in Guidance Note 3 and I might put a little screenshot for those uh, in this video at some point, maybe now, so you can have a look at them and see what I'm saying. And again, I'm not a teacher. I'm just trying to show you how um, when you get caught out on site with this, what, what what the reasoning might be um, and yeah well, I hope you enjoy it um, and we'll carry on with it shall we okay I'm gonna have to do some editing because I've not done that right okay so here you can hopefully see that I am set up to do an insulation resistance test and with this rig we've built, that it's quite a good way to explain what can happen um, if you don't disconnect uh, lamps and other equipment that might be damaged due to the insulation resistance test. So, I mean, you need to remember that any equipment that is vulnerable to damage, you should be removing. So that's been um, taken out of circuit. And uh, as we do this test, I'm going to leave some of that in circuit and you can see what, what, what actually happens. Um, and why you shouldn't do it because you're not going to get a true reflection of the condition of the wiring which is the primary aim of doing an insulation resistance test. So we're checking that there's insulation uh, in place and resistance between conductors. Uh, so yeah, if we start off first just explaining uh, how you would go about doing it. Um, I think GN3 words it as a simple installation which generally means an installation that doesn't have distribution circuits. So it's... Um, just got for example final circuits to sockets lights cookers but you haven't got sub mains going off to other additional boards and such so a simple installation they like you to do or encourage within guidance note 3 to do a global insulation resistance test and the way you do that is with the main switch off so again we're assuming that this this test rig is connected at the origin and this is somebody's home so the test main switch is off primarily and you would have your individual circuit breakers uh, in the on position and all of your conductors connected. So all of the earthing and bonding in place, all of your neutral and line terminations made and the individual breakers going out to each circuit uh, in the on position. And I'll start just because it's easier in this particular demo to do the insulation resistance tests between earth and the conductors. Uh, line conductor and neutral. So I've popped the clip there on the earth bar and um, just to demonstrate that that is actually on there, if I put the probe here onto the, the DIN rail we should get a, a low reading of IR. Now if I hit test just to show that that's on there and you can see there's um, zero mega ohm resistance so that's a dead shot as we would hope. So that's on the, the earth terminal there and um, I've set the TIS MFT Pro up to the 250 volt range. Um, most electricians will tell you to always start with that because it's a safety parameter more than anything. You're unlikely to damage something if you've missed it. Um, it it's easy to do in a, in a large installation. So always start with that before jumping straight onto 500 um, volts. And in this case, um, and again, this is a test distribution board so we don't actually have a neutral uh, bar, it's just going into the bottom of this switch here, a bit Heath Robinson I know, but we can do the test we need. So if we pop, so this main switch is off, so that's um, open, 
the incoming conductors. It's unplugged anyway, but there's um, no power there and there's nothing coming in through this switch. But the uh, circuit breakers, just to highlight again, must be in the on position. So if I put this probe onto the neutral uh, term terminal, so we've got all the neutral conductors there through the final installation circuits and the crock clip on the earth bar. And if we hit test just at 250 volts to start with, and we'll see there I'm reading it over 499 mega ohm. If I now pop that up to 500 volts and hit test, you'll see there were 1000 mega ohms. Uh, so there's, there's good insulation resistance between the neutral and the air. And now if I pop onto the line conductor, so again, I'm just going in the, the line terminal, the bottom of the main switch, which connects into the bus bar, and then through these circuit breakers into the final circuits. So this is how you do a global IR test. And again, if we just drop down to 250 to start with, then hit test. And you'll see there we're measuring uh, over 499 mega ohms. And again, if we pop that onto 500 volts now and hit test, and again, we're clearing a thousand mega ohms. Now that's the uninteresting part. So that's measuring the resistance to earth. And you would expect that to be clear in, in most situations. I mean, if you've got a lot of electronic components connected into your circuits, it's not always the case because they all leak to earth and some of them have functional earth connections and, and such. So you still have to check for any of the equipment that might be vulnerable to, to damage. But in this particular setup, I knew that wouldn't be an issue. So we've proved that we don't have any issues of insulation resistance. Um, between earth and line in neutral. And the more interesting experiment, and this is kind of why we put this emergency lighting over here. So that's in there. Okay, so I've got it set back up to 250 volts now. I am on the neutral and line on the um, outgoing side of the switch. Circuit breaker's on. And if I hit the test button, you'll see exactly what I was describing before. The charging light there pops up on the uh, emergency light and shows it was receiving voltage and then we've getting a very low insulation resistance of 0.08 mega ohms and just for fun if i pop it onto 500 volts it won't do the emergency like the greatest service but we'll do it anyway make sure i keep these probes on tight and you can see the charging light popped on there and the test sets batteries a bit low so i'm going to have to leave that one there but you see that the the charging light popped on and we've got a very low insulation resistance reading between line and neutral. Um, okay, so the TIS needs a recharge. Going to have to abandon that test there. But I think you you got the idea. And we'll, we'll just talk through again what I was trying to demonstrate. If you have left a lamp um, in the circuit when you're testing between line and neutral especially, you're going to illuminate it on that insulation resistance test or fry it if it's um, something that doesn't like that voltage. You're trying to fire through it. So you've got to be quite... Um, focused when you're going around an installation to remove lamps and equipment that's vulnerable to damage uh, or to make arrangements and not to not to put that test through those um, cables i mean you can do line and neutral together and test to earth um, and that's that's a, a test that's shown within guidance note three uh, but where you can you want to be trying to split your conductors down and do the full range of insulation resistance testing uh, across them and certainly in this case we can i mean we could easily disconnect this emergency light for example so there's no great hardship on a small little setup like this. Uh, and then you can at least test the cabling and prove that it's in order. Uh, it's important to note that this is a dead test. Didn't make that clear already. So you, again, as I said, main switch is off and there's no power coming into this board anyway. Hence me shoving my hands in it non-stop. And uh, yeah, you've got to test between line and neutral, um, line and earth and neutral and earth. Um, and again, with your global IR reading is, is low. So if you're happy that you've removed um, all of the potential things that are going to cause you an issue, such as neons and lamps and security alarms or whatever else, and you're still getting a value that's on the low side, you can break it down on a circuit by circuit basis. So in this case, we could, for example, on the lighting circuit, remove its neutral conductor, stick it in a crock clip, and then uh, test between a uh, line on the top of the circuit breaker with everything else off. So you know you're just um, getting that particular cable on the final circuit and again the same with the earth as well um, you would leave the um, earth in the actual earth terminal as, as normal but make sure that you aren't um, 
picking up any values through any other line and neutral conductors. So I've explained that, explained that properly. But if you check in guidance note three, there's actually some pretty good diagrams that show you um, how to carry out that test. Uh, if you do need to split the installation down and start testing on a circuit by circuit basis, and certainly in commercial premises, industrial and such, you're going to have to do that anyway in, in most cases. Um, if you're lucky enough to find a distribution board where you've managed to remove all of the uh, lamps and anything else that might cause you an issue, then jackpot, you can do it as a global IR, but your chances of ever finding that are slim. Uh, you'd be very lucky. So you're going to end up breaking it down on a circuit by circuit basis and then once you've found the circuit that's um, perhaps dragging those readings down you can do a little bit of digging around and try and find out what might be the cause of that uh, potentially to remove that problem so you can repeat the test or at least explain the values you've got. Um, and important to know, regard, I'm going to exclude Selvan Pell if we won't go down that rabbit hole but according to the regulations in guidance note 3 you have a minimum value of 1 mega ohm but if you were measuring anything like that at all you're going to want to be digging further to find out why, although that's um, the acceptable minimum value. If you have a reading down there, it's um, you're going to be investigating further. Don't just note that down on the on the job sheet is um, my advice. You'd want to be seeing numbers of a much higher order, or at least an explanation as to why those numbers are where they are. Um, you know, you could have some damage to the insulation of the cabling, or it could be something that you can't get to within the building to disconnect. Uh, but you need to investigate further. It's not just a case of, oh, it's 1.1 mega ohms, we're all good. And again, another point of note, if you've got two-way switching in place, you're supposed to throw the switches over so you can test them in the various positions to make sure you're getting all of the cabling um, on an insulation resistance test. You'd then repeat it once you've thrown the switch over. Um, anything else I can think of with IR testing off the top of my head, uh, other than checking in guidance note 3 to look at the diagrams, which I think I already mentioned uh, making sure that you've got all of your lamps, neons and such disconnected if you can. And usually in a domestic premises your global IR will be perfectly fine um, to, to do. And you can usually remove all of the lamps fairly easily and stuff. Um, if you are repeating that single circuit test, so again on a socket circuit, you could pull out the, the neutral conductors and put them in a crop clip and then test again just on the outgoing side of your circuit breaker with those particular conductors, everything else in the open position and off and then you know you're just picking up the line conductors to neutral and again then onto the earth bar between those neutral and line conductors as well. Um, and then you're doing that individual circuit on its own uh, and nothing else. So I hope you found that semi-interesting and uh, yeah, I'll uh, try and do a little intro and outro and piece this together in some way Sorry about the TIS dying on me, the charger's at home, so I can't fire it back up on charge. Something I did notice about this that I'll just mention, I didn't realise this side bit open, there's actually a stylus in there for using on the touchscreen. So I found that out purely by accident. If, um, other people aren't aware of it. Teach me to read the instruction book, won't it? Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. Sorry about the TIS running out of charge. Um, I forgot to stick it on charge overnight and I've left the charger at home so I can't do anything about it and we've recorded all this now so we're going to run with it if you have any questions about insulation resistance testing drop them in the comments uh, I'll show some three phase one in a bit more detail uh, another day this was just a quick um, quick quick go at this while I had time in the office this morning and uh, yeah I'm not a teacher don't hold me to uh, account for showing you but I am I am conscious now in, in lockdown that people are in college they don't have uh, any access to training other than virtually and I thought it might be useful to just start chucking a bit of content up of me doing some random testing and it does also explain some of the problems you might find out on site because you hear all this stuff and see it in textbooks and then when you go out and start doing some testing and inspecting and it doesn't all marry up in the way you would want uh, you start telling yourself that you're doing something wrong or there's, there's something you're missing when the reality is it's just normal part and parcel of everyday inspection and testing. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and catch you on the next one.